Good morning. My name is Charles Lee Emerson. This is a precursor to my message tomorrow at the Full Gospel Businessmen's Meeting in Dayton, Ohio. It's about a prophecy that's taking place, has taken place, and is yet to be fulfilled in its completeness. If we look at Habakkuk 2, it says, if, you, if I may read, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am approved, reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. I'm here to tell you that we live by faith. Joy and I have the Village Carpenter Worldwide Ministries, Publishing House, Bible School, OS Publishing, and Galactic Ordained Ministries at God's House International in Lakeview, Ohio. That's at Indian Lake, up at Indian Lake, Ohio. And I would like to present to you our newest book. We've done over 250 books or something. 239 videos. This is the new one. This is the book. It's called Galactic Ordained Vehicle by the Village Carpenter. The Village Carpenter is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the son of the carpenter, Joseph the Carpenter. And we have carried that name for years, since 1972, and there's more to that I'll tell you about later. And it has grown and grown and grown. Yesterday I received a phone call from a lady about our Bible school. And she's interested in the Bible school, and she wants to be interested in the fire of God. We have a book that's published about uh, fire baptism by one of our other authors. We have several authors that work with us. 112 altogether, some of them are incubator authors. They're writing, but they're not finished. Others are published already. And this book, Galactic Ordained Vehicle, started actually in 1972 also. And uh, I'll tell you the story about that in just a moment. But as I go to, just to give you some glimpses of things. You ever seen that picture before? That is uh, over the North Pole, I believe, looking down from the space shuttle. And it's about 1,200 miles wide. It's a hole in the Earth. Have you ever heard of the inner Earth? Just wetting your whistle here. And they say the people that live in Middle Earth, they're called Agarthans. It's called Agartha. You know about that? And here's a, uh, the Boston Post says William Byrd. He was an admiral in the U.S. Navy. He made a trip into the inner earth at the North Pole and uh, he came back, let's see what it says, 15 and a half hours later. And I won't tell you his story. Research it and find it out. The reason I say that, when I first started publishing, way back several years ago, about 10 years ago now, I told something of a prophetic nature to a lady in our church. I mean, I mean to our church. And then afterwards, you know how people mingle around when they're leaving church and talking to each other. This one lady came up to me and she says, Brother Charles, you need to research more. There's a lot more out there. Well, there's a lot that I've found in the last 10 years. But 
you're going to be surprised when I tell you what we're talking about today. In your Genesis, God's it said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we know through physicists, scientists, whatever you want to call them, astronomers, astrologers, whatever they're called, there is three heavens. You have the air around us on our earth. It goes up to, what, 70,000 or something like that. I mean, you can't breathe over 15,000. You have to have oxygen. But nonetheless, that's the first earth, the first heaven. The second heaven is the galaxies. All the creation out there are the galaxies. And the third heaven is where God is. That's where God's holy place is. But nonetheless, I, the story starts right here. This is chapter 2. It says, Charles journeys. Plural, plur journeys. Am I, am I getting your whistle wet? And basically, I'm going to tell you the story. I was praying out. We have done a lot of fire pit, fire pit videos and um, things like that. And I was out there one evening and praying with, you know, com communing with Father God. And I said, you know, I don't know what I said prior up to this, but all of a sudden he spoke to me and he says, Charles, one of the biggest things I ever gave you to do was to become an aircraft commander and a pilot. And I did that in the Vietnam War. And that's been 40 plus years ago. But I was out there praying. And all of a sudden, I got to thinking about what the Lord just told me. And I said, Lord, pause right there, if you will. Remember I said I've been doing a lot of research for the last 10 years. Okay. When he said that to me, I've been thinking about some of my research. About the galactic travels out there. And everybody knows about... You know, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise and and uh, the space program that NASA's had on, gone for years. And uh, we know about, uh, gee, people are talking about UFOs. Well, back in 1972, I just come back from Vietnam in 71. In 1972, during the day, I had a vision. I mean, just clear, looking at the blue sky, and all of a sudden I saw what I'm about to tell you. And you know, the Bible says, old men dream dreams and young men have visions. That was apropos, is that the word? Because I was 20-something, early 20s. Okay, I saw, I was in this contraption going through these stars, you know, up beyond our atmosphere, going through these stars, just coming at us like crazy and, and really fast. And all of a sudden I looked to my left and here's this man standing there in white. you got to realize now, I was a young, brand new Christian. I didn't know what that was. And I looked at him and I'm, wow, this is awesome. As a pilot, you know, I was, I was overjoyed. And as I'm watching, I looked at him again and he looked at me and smiled. And here's the way it was. Now, get, we're looking out the window, right? And I'm standing where you're at. And he looked over and he says, you want to try it? Well, of course I wanted to try it. I was a pilot. I knew how to control a helicopter, an airplane. I've flown 13 different aircraft. And I thought, yeah, but there's no controls. And the man smiled. Well, see, I've learned to come back to this through my research. That was definitely an angel. And I believe I even know his name. But that's immaterial right now. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, but there's no controls. And he smiled and he says, it's thought activated. Thought activated. Hmm. It makes you think, doesn't it? Now, when I was younger, my wife and I had Sunday school classes. I had a youth group, and I used to teach the kids, and I'll tell you right now, and I'm going to prove this to you. I, I told them, I said, you know, the speed of light, that's what we thought was the fastest thing there was, you know, light traveling from one planet to another. We send a beam of light out, and it takes so long to get there. 186,280 Two is it? Miles per second. That's pretty fast. Really. That's pretty slow. So we got to thinking about the speed of thought, you know, the uh, speed of thought. And there's a Bible verse that says that the Lord will come in the twinkling of an eye. And they've tried, you know, science has tried to measure the twinkling of an eye. How fast is that? You know, blink. 
the twinkling of an eye is faster than a blink. And they've come up with some theory of how fast it is. It's fast. But the speed of thought is much faster than that. Now here's my illustration. Right now, you're watching this video. You think about the farthest vacation you've ever been to. And before I even finished saying been to, it was already in your mind. You knew where it was. You saw it in your mind. You were there. Now think about how far away that was. That's pretty fast, isn't it? Well, with that being said, I thought about that. And uh, I was out there at my fire pit, and I was talking with Father God. And uh, he says, Charles, what would you like to do with this knowledge that I've given you? You know about being an aircraft commander and a pilot and all these different aircraft and I says instantly I thought about it, and I said Lord I'd go get my family and I'd take them to heaven and so that started he said continue okay <laughs> I said my parking lot out there I've measured where God's house we got a big parking lot right there I, it's a uh, over 50 foot in the circle and the Huey helicopter I flew many hours in you take a tape measure, it's 50 foot, two 25 foot rotor blades. <coughs> Excuse me. And I know that a Palladian light ship can land there. And I also know that they do have uh, starships, light ships, and beam ships coming to and from our Earth. There's more to that. But they're, they've been doing that for a long time since the. Uh, if I get this right, in the 20th century, I mean, they've been coming here longer than that, but I'm saying the latest, they've been keeping record. Uh, those of you that may remember the Project Blue Book in the Air Force, where they tried to record all these reports of flying saucers and stuff, and then they finally ended that, you know, and they said, no, nah, this doesn't mean anything. Well, it's a cover-up, you know, it's a government cover-up, and I got proof right here in this book. But nonetheless, so... To stick with my story, chapter 2, I went ahead and went to my wife, the mother of my children, with my light ship. And it took me a flash of a second to get there because she lives way down the road from where I'm at. And here I am. I'm going to cover this up here. I don't want you to see the other one. Right there I am in front of her place she lives. See my light ship in her front yard? That's right. And instantly I had spoken in my spirit. And I says, her name I said come outside and I knew that if God was in it she would respond because see we're not together and she did not want to ever see me again that's another story but I got there I was cloaked where she couldn't see me sitting 60 foot or so away from the door <coughs> she came out and all of a sudden I became visible and she said what are you doing here and I says come with me come and see and she started walking toward me, and she's looking left and right. She said, where's your car? And all of a sudden, she could see this big light ship. See that? Here's a full picture of it. I love light. God is the father of lights. Anyway, she came, and as soon as she touched my hand, you know, remember the Enterprise? Beam me up, Scotty. We were up in that thing. And we started descending up. She said, where are we going? <coughs> and there was no hesitation no fear. She trusted what I was saying because Father God is in it. <coughs> and I said, we got to go get our son. So I headed south on down to pick up our son and we landed in his front yard. Okay. And then, sure enough, I had already called him and I said, come out, come out front. And as we were landing down there, he was there, and he did not even see us land because we were cloaked. And as soon as I became visible to him, standing there, he says he saw his mother too. He said, "What are you guys doing?" And we stuck our heads, come and see. He came to us. We're back up in it. Took on, took on off, and I told her, I said, "Tell him what you know because I got to talk to her this time." And I called him in the spirit. We boogied to his place, which is real close, and we went down to his place which I can show you both of them now. He's at the bottom picture. And again, same scenario. He was outside, and we became visible. 
And he says, what are you guys doing here? All of us. There was, you know, three of us standing there. We said, come and see. He walked up to us and up and beating me up, Scotty. You know what I'm saying? And we're taking off and we're climbing up and we're heading out to our galaxy. And, of course, I explained to him that we were headed to heaven. And there's more to that story, but I'm going to brief on because I want to tell the sequence of what's going here in this prophetic message. So then a day went by or so, and I was out there again. Well, i got to show you this. Now, you might think I'm crazy. That's fine. You can do that. See these pictures here? The first one, it says NASA on it. That's right. You can see that. 1959. The one below it, Bill Dana, he's the pilot, 1966. All this time our government's been lying to us. They've had flying saucers also. And that takes care of chapter 2. Now chapter 3, here's where the prophetic word comes in. We have already done videos, a couple, of Donald Trump being president. And some of this goes back to 2011. And some of our writings in this book started... Remember I said 1972? But in 2011, we had some more stuff that came to us. We put in the book here. And uh, so I'm out there at my fire pit. And I was all excited about what happened. I mean, I was really excited. And I said, Lord, could I do that again? Could I go fly again? <laughs> and he says, he said to me, he says, uh, what would you do? And instantly, I'm telling you, because in my research, I saw a video of Donald Trump's airplane, and there's, they say, so much gold inside of it that they could completely paint a, a city bus. Got gold trim everywhere. It's immaculate. His uh, crew wear gloves when they clean it. It's no no marks at all. This man is very, uh, very neat, very neat. But nonetheless, I said, Lord, I'd like to get Donald Trump. And he says, what? Well, continue what would you do and I said I would take him to show him God's glory it's not about gold and silver it's about God's glory and that he can take a common young man like me young <laughs> 68 years old now I already told you 40 years ago I was in Vietnam War okay so uh, just to show him the glory of God through a simple man like me and so he gave me permission and we took off but there's something I want to read to you in uh, Hebrews 12, it says, Wherefore we are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. And let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that it is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy which was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and to sit down at the right hand of, of the throne of God for, cons for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself uh, lest ye be wearied and faint not in your minds God wants us to realize that there are people watching us for years I taught Sunday school you know young kids and stuff I always thought it was people watching us. Then one day I realized that there are angels. We have one of our authors, which I'll tell a little bit about in the book here. She says, but Charles, those are fallen angels that are doing this stuff. And I said, but wait. Only one third was kicked out of heaven with Lucifer. That he, he uh, tricked them and they followed him. One third of God's heavenly host. That means... Two-thirds are good angels. They are messenger gods of God, and they obey what he says. That's a good thing. So then, in my thought pattern, I realized that there are a lot of angels. There's spiritual warfare going on, even in our midst, right here at God's house today. And it's in your life as well, if you're honest. So I go forward, and I'm moving on rapidly because I just want to show you. So here we are over New York City right over Trump Tower, we're hovering down in my light ship, and here I'm cloaked right down on the street, 
sitting right there in front of Trump Tower. See the clock? 10, 19, I think it says, in the Coca-Cola truck. And then I uncloak our ship. And there we are, sitting there right by the Coke truck. Isn't that awesome? And I already called Donald Trump, and he came out. He said, who are you? And I said, come follow me. I said, come and see. No fear in that man's eyes. He heard what I said. He believed what I said. It's Father God's in it. And we took off, and in the next picture, obviously, that's what he sees all the time when he gets on his helicopter of Trump Tower and takes off. And I've flown over New York City myself and many other cities. And you can see what I'm saying there. So I'm telling him about the certain things he's going to see, the glory of God and family members that are passed and things like that. And all of a sudden, God spoke again. He says, Charles, is that's not necessary to discuss any further. This is Donald's surprise. Let him enjoy the ride. <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. So then chapter 4. We get into chapter 4. The girl that we talked about that says, Charles, these are fallen angels. I decided, I said, Lord, the third time, you know, the third time which is actually my fourth trip, I said, I would like to uh, take Natalie and show her your glory. And so <laughs> he permitted it. Here we are hovering over her house, coming down to land at her house. And the same thing, I called her in the spirit. I said, come out. And you can see we're descending down right over her house up here. And here I'm right out front of the house. And she come right out. She said, well, what are you doing? I said, come and see. So we got in. Here we're taking off right around the corner of the house there. And then... We were hovering up, and I just, for her pleasure, I hovered over the house so she could see her, her uh, pools out in the backyard, the children's pool, the bigger pool, and her yard and her car. She'd never seen that before. She never flew in a helicopter or nothing. So we went ahead and took off and took her also. And then we go on. Now here's where the prophetic word starts. This is in chapter 5. In praying about this, I asked the Lord about this. And he broke into my thought pattern. He says, Charles, you will indeed be a light ship pilot. But more than that, you will also be a Galactic Federation of Light flight commander. For years, you have been praying for 200 million souls to be saved. Now let me pause there. You see, we publish Christian books, and we're after souls to get saved. It's not about the money. It's about getting souls saved. Okay, with that being said, now on what the Lord said. There have been times when you have doubted that this would ever happen. I have given you from time to time word of a soul getting saved. And I have always encouraged you to continue on in the publishing of Christian books. You have remained faithful, and I will now tell you that you will have many motherships that you will be commander over. These motherships will house 200 million souls that have been saved through our ministry. You see, we work for the Lord. It's His ministry, our ministry. We work together. And this is an interesting picture. All of these motherships and lightships all traveling to where God says to go. But see, there's more to that. He says, you and your personal lightship will guide these motherships and these souls to their new home, which I will show you later. Boy, is that a thought. He says, Do not doubt, my son, as I will confirm these words through your wife, Joy. Amen. Hallelujah. That I wrote on August the 3rd. August the 3rd. Now realize I said that we had already put up a video about 2011 uh, Mark Taylor spoke and said that Trump would be president. Well, I put that up on our YouTube account. I'm speaking the words, but it was his original prophecy. I put that video, I mean, these words here were spoken on August the 3rd. And then, <clears throat> as we go along, okay, here we go, the 19th. Joy has the, the gift of the prophetic. When God speaks to her, she writes. It's like the words are flowing out of her finger on that pen or pencil. And this has happened with other authors. Uh, Brother Luke Chapman, the same thing. We've done over 40 books for him. When I first met him, 
I, I went for three books. I, you know, I, he told me three titles, and I made an appointment to go see him. I was all fired up. Well, by the time we got there, he had 30 books laid out on his table. He had written them, but he didn't know what to do next. Well, since then, we have a contract for 70 books. He's done 42, I think. But he said the same thing. It's like he starts, and it can't. he says, I can't keep up. It just flows right out. And that's what God does when he moves on you. That's what the Spirit does. He moves on you. But I wanted to read to you what Joy said. She said, um, she says, Charles, I have a word. God just spoke to me. And she writes when he speaks to her because she can't remember it. She's 85 years old. And it would be the same thing if God's talking to you. You better write it down. You'll forget. So <coughs> she, I come in and she showed me the word. And this is what Jesus said to her, what God, what God said to her. I have put you into Charles' life as an encourager. As for taking a ride with him in a spaceship, you won't be here then. You won't be here for that. Charles will be doing great things for me before I take him home. Hmm, interesting. Tell him, I will provide all things he has need of, including a mate. I'm already married to Joy. Oh yeah, but he did say she was not going to ride with me because he was going to take her home. Interesting. Take one day at a time, he said. That is all I have promised you. And that's true, right? The Bible says take no thought for the morrow. And the past belongs to him because we cannot change the past, right? We have today. He said, it goes on and he says, your sons will see your great things, your greatness, Charles. I don't care about greatness, but I do want to serve the Lord. They will come to you in this lifetime. Praise me, Jesus. You think that didn't fire me up? Woo-wee. And uh, there's more, but I just wanted to show you that about this, this book, this new book. Very interesting. You see the earth? That mothership is bigger than the earth. How about that? You say, yeah, but somebody designed that picture. I don't know if they did or not. I'm not even doubting nothing of this. Because you remember Habakkuk? The words of Habakkuk that we talked about there in the beginning? I'll tell you the story about Habakkuk. It says here in verse 1, I will stand upon my watch. In other words, he would go up on top of the roof and just like many times I'm out there at the fire pit, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. That's when the Lord calls on me. And I asked him one time about that. He said, well, look when you was born, Charles. I was born earlier in the morning like that. <coughs> and I got that on the website, on the internet to prove it also. But anyway, he says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And when I shall answer, when I am reproved. See, when God speaks to us, if we're not in the right relationship to him, there's going to be reproval. We're going to be chastised. We're going to be buffeted, all that. We're, he's going to get right with us first. We cannot have any sin in our heart. We must be obedient with God and let him handle all things. Because we belong to God, right? Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make, a, make it plain upon tablets, and he will run that readeth it. So I'm pointing this out to you, this prophecy of Habakkuk, he's saying to write this out so men will see it, so the readers will run and do what they're supposed to do. And that's what we're doing. Some people said, Charles, if I don't know you, I'd say you're crazy. But they know me. They know the Lord also. Uh, one of my other authors, who was a pilot in Vietnam too, I've already talked to him about this, he's one of my chosen to, he'll get a hundred light ships to be in charge of that I will assign to him. And he is not having any fear with this at all. And he's about my age. Because he realizes that we are eternal beings. We live forever. And this is just the next step. Whether it's today, tomorrow, 100 years from now. Remember, there's a thousand year reign of the Lord on the earth. When he set his kingdom up, we got plenty of time to learn all this stuff. So don't be nervous. You will learn this. It's coming very rapidly. Sooner than you think. So I wanted to point that out, and uh, with the disclaimer that I have in the front of the book, 
You remember, uh, some of you, maybe not, there was a series called Left Behind. Uh, several books. Several books. Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins. And they wrote truth out of the book of Revelation, because God's word is always true, but it is a story, a fictional story. And many, many, many souls have been saved by reading those books. That's right. And that's what this is. Because in the front of it, I have my acknowledgement page. That's in the front of every one of our books. And it says, We do want to thank our Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost for keeping his word when he said, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. That's Isaiah 55:11. Then I say on down, I want to thank Father God for this inspiration. This book is like the Holy Bible. You either believe it or you don't. This book that we wrote is you either believe it or you don't. So I want to close with that. And I just want to say that we hope you enjoyed this. And if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, I'm telling you three things. Ask, believe, and confess. Just ask him. Say, Lord, I need you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and I confess those sins. And then receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And you heard that whistle. Joy is calling me. I have to go. Because I take care of her. She's 85. God bless you all, and may peace be with you. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Hallelujah. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Amen. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Hallelujah. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Hallelujah. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Amen. All the Lord long straight and pity friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.